Meet Greta, a school superintendent looking to solve her district's kindergarten readiness problem. She read a journal article about a program with impressive results and decided to give it a try. But a year later, the kindergartners in Greta's district were no better off. Unfortunately, this is all too common. So many evidence-based programs show promise in research settings but fail in the real world. The reason is the scale-up effect, a phenomenon that leads to changes in the success or cost of a program when you move from a small scale to a large one. What if, instead of having Greta and her team invest in a program that didn't work, we could set them up for success? What if we could predict how the costs or benefits might change with real-world implementation? What if we could identify and mitigate the threats to scalability, the factors that increase costs or decrease benefits when you go from small to big? Using an economic model to understand what's driving these changes, a University of Chicago study identified four potential causes of the scale-up effect. First, inference. Researchers and policymakers don't always draw the right conclusions from available data. It's possible that the promising experiment Greta read about may not have been so promising after all. The researcher just got lucky, and if they had repeated the program several times, it might not have shown such promise. This is called a false positive. Second, properties of the population. People who participate in research aren't always the same as people in the larger population. It's possible that in Greta's district, many of the incoming kindergartners were five years old but the students from the initial study were older on average. Third, properties of the situation. The situation where the study was conducted may not be the same as the situation in other places where the program will be implemented. For instance, in Greta's district, teachers were asked to implement the new program after receiving two training sessions. In the initial study, the people who spent years developing the program were the ones implementing it. And fourth, spillover and general equilibrium effects. Treating some people can create a spillover effect on others. The original research study may have had families that worked together in the program and helped each other's kids improve because of these relationships, whereas in Greta's district, this coordination may not have occurred. Identifying these potential threats to scalability is a first step to successfully turning evidence-based programs into effective, actionable policy. But to truly address the scale-up effect, we need everyone who believes in the power of science-based policy, scholars, funders, practitioners, and policymakers, to work together to acknowledge these threats and to understand how results scale. Then, we can proactively mitigate threats to scalability, pursue the right programs in the proper context, set the right expectations, and ensure a strong relationship between scientific research and policymaking. By understanding the science of how to use science, we can complement current evidence-based policy with policy-based evidence. We can keep the Gretas of the world interested in implementing new and emerging research and, more importantly, help them achieve their desired outcomes. And we can harness the power of evidence-based policy to change lives. For more about the scale-up effect and what to do about it, visit us online and read The Science of Using Science Towards an Understanding of the Threats to Scaling Experiments.